we did end up on our backs was not to put a massive amount of effort into getting up, just play guard and, and stay safe because, you know, the next round starts on the feet and, and try to do damage there. But it's still tiring, you know. And I, I, you know, uh, Connor gets a hard time about his, uh, about his cardio all the time, but who has Khabib faced that didn't look like that after two rounds? Iaquinta. I, I quit, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I was super impressed with Al Iaquinta in that fight, especially considering he came into that fight looking for a third, a three-round fight. I mean, that was what he was trained for. Right. He was trained for a three-round fight, and it, it changes up, and all of a sudden he's in a five-round fight for the title. Fucking crazy. Yeah. I mean, crazy <laughs> set of circumstances. But it almost makes you wonder, and this is, I mean, you could speak to this better than anybody, how much, how much is too much? In, in regard to training for a fight like this, like maybe training for a three round fight is the way to go when you have to fight a five round fight. So you're not so fucking beat up by the time you get to the fight. If you already know how to fight five rounds, you've already done it. And if you're a guy like Connor who's just got so much experience in the game, it might be that it's like there's a point of diminishing returns in terms of your strength and conditioning and that guys just go too far push too hard and just don't have it yeah. when it comes to I mean how many times have you seen a fighter be overtrained when they fight very often definitely you know they've they've given their best rounds in the gym and it's very difficult as well in those last 2 weeks because anxiety is starting to grow so you want to train harder Right. And you, you want to get one more spar in and you want to, yeah. you know, because the fight's coming. It's, it's almost like when you're back in school and you're cramming for an exam. Mm -hmm. Well, if the exam's tomorrow, I'm going to stay up all night studying, right. you know. And right. I, it actually got me through college, so <laughs> it works somewhat. But, but in fighting, we've got to do the opposite. We've yeah. got, we got to have a solid taper off period. And that is hard when you're dealing with a 20-something-year-old man. And he, he's, yeah. he's, he's dealing with what's, what's coming around the corner. So, But, you know, that's, uh, that's the trainer's job, you know. How much did he taper off for this fight? Uh, same as usual. We have about a two-week uh, taper-off period where we start bringing it down. Um, he, did, he did actually spar even after that. Um, you know, we're, we were working very hard for this fight in a limit, you know, somewhat limited period of time. Um, so we did, didn't taper off quite the way we would normally do, but roughly two weeks. If you wanted to do a rematch, and if the UFC did grant a rematch, then this is obviously dependent upon how the Nevada State Athletic Commission handles the legal ramifications of him jumping out of the cage, attacking Dylan Dennis, the subsequent brawl, the chaos that ensued, visas. I mean, you're, you're dealing with a lot of legal shit yeah, in this fight yeah. that, that could hold things up. I mean, they held both guys' purses, correct? Uh, well, they held uh, Habib's. Connor got his. Yeah, okay. Connor got his purse paid. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he gets his purse. And Khabib, I mean, who the fuck knows what's going to happen with him? You know, and. Uh, yeah, I, I hope they're, they're lenient on him. And not just so we can get a rematch. I mean, I love watching him fight for a start. Yeah. Um, and I can. I can stretch myself to understand his reaction. Yeah. I can stretch myself to understand. I can't stretch myself to understand the other guys' reactions. I and what And what they did. Yes. For Habib, he jumped over the cage and he jumps. On. It's, it's not the end of the who world. Who was the guy that jumped in that was wearing red who, who punched Connor? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I think that's his boxing coach, but I'm, I'm guessing He's here. a fighter. He fights for the UFC. Uh, in the red? Was yeah. that not an old? He yeah. wasn't older. Let me, let me actually work with him. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> you work with <laughs> there him? There you go. Yeah. Who is he? I don't, I don't know his name. You know, it's either Islam or Rustan. Yeah. yeah, it was either Islam or Rustam. Yeah, I, I, think, I don't think I it was either one no, of those guys. Like I know Islam, it's a different guy. He was, you know, he hit Dylan. Yeah, yeah. And, and a guy in a suit that I heard is his Russian manager. He uh, hit Dylan. Either way, um, um, there's but, but actually in the cage when when your man yeah. went in and, and and hit him from behind. Uh, yeah, you know, I can't I can't understand that. Like I said, for 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 Habib, I didn't think it was, you know, it was. It's just, it's almost. It's, just, it's a, I, such a foolish thing to do because foolish he, thing to do. he'd already and, won. Yeah. I know that Dylan was talking shit and he was angry, but. Well, he actually didn't say anything because I, I heard a few people saying that. Now, I was standing beside Dylan. I didn't see what he did, but I could hear. So he didn't say anything. Now, when I watched the back, I seen he kind of beckoned them on. Yeah. You know, just stupid end of fight stuff, but it. I didn't think it justified that level of response. Now, maybe there was something else in the lead-up, you know. Probably. Dil Dylan is a bit of a troll online. Yeah. So uh, there was probably a bit of a, a build-up of other stuff. But, um, yeah, like I said, it, it wasn't that big a deal to me what Habib did. Yeah. It just really wasn't. Well, there's two ways of looking at it in, in terms of, like, the trash talking. And w one way is that, man, does that sell a fight? 
I mean, it sells a fight. I mean, Connor's one of the best ever at it, if not the best ever at it, talking shit to opponents, getting them riled up. I mean, it is the reason why Jose Aldo lost his composure and came charging face first at Connor. I mean, you've you got to think emotions played a big part of that. It, it ramps up your stress. It ramps up the fighters' uh, anxiety, anticipation, and it ramps up the pressure on them to win. And, to, and this emotion that they're fighting with fucks up their judgment. It just does. And it's a major tool that, Tonner, that Connor uses. And, but on the other hand, people say, well, I'd like it when fighters are respectful. And this is one of the things that Khabib's saying. This, this, this sport should be about respect. You shouldn't be talking about someone's family. You shouldn't be talking about someone's religion. You shouldn't be talking about someone's country. But, you know, on the other hand, that's one of the reasons why Connor's so fucking huge. It's not just his results. It's all the other things that come along with it. It's the excitement that he generates, the shit talking, the who the fuck is that guy? Like that kind of <laughs> shit. That's a big part of who he is. Mm. It's a part of who he is as this cultural icon. I mean, it's one of the reasons why people love him. I mean, they, they, they don't just love his ability inside the octagon, which is quite substantial. They, they love the swagger. They love when he comes in with rubber arms and, and struts <laughs> around the cage. The they work. love all that shit. They love all that shit, but it's like, when is too far? And that is the question. When is too far? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, every, Connor's a, a real uh, divider. You know, some people will love it and some people will hate it. I'm not really that interested in people's opinions on things. I'm just interested in what is. And what is, that sells fights. Yeah. You know, there's a reason he's the highest paid guy. Um, so if that is what is, and that's just natural for him to do as well. It's not an act. It's not... You know, when he's sparring, like him and Artem are the best of friends, and every single spar, you shit talk each other. Oh, you're shit today, you know, you're not on form today. And, you know, people listen to that and, like, well, they, they hate each other. And then it's big smiles at the end of it. It's just part of the game for him. It's part, he enjoys it. It's a bit of fun. This one was darker, you know, as, as, as Dana said, it definitely was, but it's just part of who he is. I, I don't really involve myself in it. I try to stay outside of that and then just focus on the. The task in hand. Does it, is it ever get cringy for you? Because you are a very respectful guy. Yeah, I mean, it's absolutely not my personality. It's absolutely not my personality. But again, I don't find my own opinions on things very interesting. I'm only interested in um, what is, you know. There's a fact that he, he does this, and it's got him the results he has. Okay, well, I guess that's what he does. It's not how I am. Right. I mean, you look at the two biggest names in combat sports, Floyd Mayweather and Conor McGregor, and they both do it. Yeah. I mean, you know, like my favorite fighter back in the day was Fedor. Mm. And uh, it, there was a man that barely said anything, and the, the, the purists, if you want to say, loved him. But he was also fighting mostly in Japan, and it's a different vibe. Culture. It's a different yeah. culture than here. Yeah. Um, you know, you could be that guy. And I almost have the two extremes. I've Gunnar Nelson, who you never hear. A blip out of yes, uh, yeah. and then I have Connor, who's you know the other end of the right. scale, and um, you know you can only be true to yourself. But at, I look at their, their you know their followings and their sponsorship deals and, and their fight purses and stuff, and it's obvious which one is is doing better. You know, if yeah. if if the if the if we can agree on the object of prize fighting is to make money, and that's it. The object of martial arts, I think, is very different. But the object of prize fighting, and don't ever lose sight of that as soon as I hear a fighter saying it's for some other reason I'll try to make him retire as quick as possible because he's not being smart you know you're, you're taking damage for money and keep keep that in mind no matter what your your choices are do you have guys in the gym that you see that sort of mimic Connor of course of course you yeah know, you're talking you're, you're dealing with teenagers and, and and 20s yeah and that's you know i look back on myself it's a hugely impressionable impressionable period of your life you're all, you're looking you know we so young men almost try out different personalities you know yeah. you, and and you have such a strong personality in the gym definitely i can i can spot the 18 year old walking in with the man bun <laughs> and the suit telling me he's going to be the next you know <laughs> i probably would have been the same at 18 you know it's right. it's no different but i through, again, months and years of conversations, you know, not telling them what to do, but conversations, I sort of say, this is a completely natural thing to do, but start to find your own voice and find your own way. And if that's who you are, you enjoy that side of it, well, run with it. Yeah. If it's not who you are, even the, the fans will see through it very quick as well. You know, mm -hmm. the fans can see when someone is genuinely doing something and, and doing it as, as, as an act.